The goal of this tutorial is to ensure that your simulation runs, which helps to verify that all the necessary packages are correctly installed. Let's begin by setting up our environment. I'm currently in the cat vehicle workspace, which is in my home directory, and I'm going to source devel slash setup.bash. This makes sure that all of the binary file locations and script file locations are added to the path, and that, it, that ROS will understand what kind of packages I have installed. Every time I open a tab, I'm going to need to source this file, so you may also want to add it to the end of your bash RC file. The first thing I'm going to run is the uh, easy launch, ROS launch, cat vehicle, and cat vehicle underscore skid pan dot launch. What this does is it starts up a whole bunch of things that are all different ROS packages, they're ROS nodes, they're found kind of all over the place in ROS. And then at the end of it, there's kind of nothing here. So all this stuff flies by, you might be thinking, okay, any minute now I'm going to get a, something to open up, and then in fact nothing will open up. And the reason why is that we decoupled the visualization from the actual simulation of the cat vehicle. So let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on here. Oops. Maybe not. There we are. Sorry, trying to rearrange my screens is always tricky. Ross topic list. This is going to show me all the Ross topics that are out there. And we can see quite a few Ross topics that are related to the cat vehicle. So we have some camera information. Uh, we can see that we have command velocity and another thing called command velocity safe. And uh, there's something called the distance estimator that's running. I'm getting data from the front laser points. I have LiDAR points. And so there's all these different topics that are being published about the cat vehicle. If you don't understand what topics are, then you can go and review the idea of a ROS topic. We have quite a few of them that are floating around. So if you want to know whether your simulation is working fine, then you can compare your ROS topic list against this list that's shown in the tutorial. And again, there's a lot of stuff there. If I want to find out about a particular node, let's make a list of my ROS nodes, ROS node list. So I ran the command here, which means that everything that's highlighted here is a current ROS node. So we know that we're running gazebo, uh, and we also know that uh, there's this standard ROS out, which is output that comes from other ROS components, so that's a node that's always running. And then there's a bunch of other stuff here that all ends with cat vehicle. The reason it has cat vehicle at the end is because we actually do have the capability of running more than one car at a time, and if you give a name to that other car, the other car's name will show up at the end. But we can see a bunch of other nodes here that are doing different kinds of things. So let's check out this one. Uh, I can't remember if this is the one that's actually... Oh, Robot State Publisher. Let's do that one. So Ross node info cat vehicle robot state, and then here if you just hit tab, it'll fill out the rest of it for you. Um, so we can see a bunch of information about the robot state publisher. If we scroll up a little bit here. So the name of the node is listed here, and it's actually publishing three things. It's publishing transforms on slash tf, uh, static transforms in slash ts under tf underscore static, and then it's also publishing to ROS out. It's subscribing to the joint states, which is coming out of gazebo, um, and it's also subscribing to the clock, so it's time stamping every single update that it gets so that we know when a joint was where. And it's providing, providing two services. One of them is the log level, and the other is to find out what logs are actually running. And it's running here on my local machine, JMS Cat Vehicle. And you can see here a little bit more information about the kinds of connections that are there. So here's ROS out connection, the, the clock connection, the joint states connection, uh, which is both uh, inbound here on joint states, um, and then we have another one here to Gazebo. So this is publishing to the joint state publisher, and then we're also publishing to Gazebo. Let's look at another one. Scroll down a little bit more here to see what else we can find. So we look, just looked at the JMS or at the publisher cat vehicle. Let's look at command vel to Gazebo cat vehicle. Ross node info slash cat vehicle command vel to gazebo cat vehicle. This is subscribing to a lot more topics. So we can see here, if we scroll up a little bit, 
it's publishing uh, data to the front left steering controller, to the front right steering controller. Uh, it's also giving information to the velocity controller for joint two and the velocity controller for joint one. So these two velocity controllers actually control the rear tires and these two controllers, the left and right steering position, control the steering angles of the tires. So this command velocity to gazebo transforms a command velocity, which is a twist message, to the kinds of messages that gazebo can understand. We can see uh, sort of what's happening everywhere if we run our Ross run RQT graph. This is going to show us a graph in uh, QT of every single thing that's running everywhere and the robot that it's running on or the namespace that it's running in. So you can see over here, you might be able to zoom in some here. So we can see that uh, Gazebo is receiving information about joint states uh, and it's publishing information here to the distance estimator, so we're publishing the front laser points. The cat vehicle odometry is being published by Gazebo and it's showing up in the odom to path of the cat vehicle. Um, and then the model states and Gazebo is also publishing a bunch of information to itself. Uh, we can scroll down over here and see Another thing that's coming into Gazebo is this front left steering position controller, and then presumably up at the top we see the front right steering controller that's headed back somewhere. So I'm going to try to zoom out a little bit here again now so we can see that everything is moving around uh, and all the things that are here. So the distance estimator is subscribing. Some of these subscriptions are inside of the cat vehicle and some of them are on the outside. Um, but possibly, you know, the, the real important thing that you want to take away from this is that we have a bunch of nodes that are all running inside the cat vehicle, and they're all kind of doing interesting things. So if you want to know more about uh, how all of these things work, then you can go and look inside each of those nodes. So we have Odom to Path, the Distance Estimator. Uh, each of these things are, are being produced um, inside of our source repository. And if you want to know about why we do certain things in Gazebo, then you can go review some of the Gazebo tutorials out there that tell how to interface ROS with Gazebo. Uh, hopefully what you've got by now is kind of the main idea, which is that there's a bunch of things that are moving around, and we can investigate whether something's working or not, or whether something is connected or not, without actually having to visualize something. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is, the next tutorial I'm going to do, is that I want to show you how it is that we can visualize some stuff inside the cat vehicle.